Good morning. I'm so glad for all of you who are joining us, both in this sanctuary and virtually. I'm thrilled to have everyone with us. We invite you to type guest in um, the space provided on the contact card so that we might be with in, more intentionally, excuse me, uh, in touch with you. Um, so please take a moment to fill out um, the connection card as it is found uh, on uh, the Facebook feed. Prayer requests can be submitted to uh, my phone number, which I think is going to show up there um, until the end of the sermon. Also, we are still looking for um, two additional members to join our stream team and website maintenance team. Uh, Suzanne is in the back. Edwin's uh, doing duty up here for me. So say hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, uh, the disclaimer is if there are mistakes on any of the uh, PowerPoint presentations, they're mine, uh, not anyone else's. Uh, this is uh, still kind of a steep learning curve for me. Um, one other announcement, um, we are planning a rummage sale drop-off on June 11th um, from 9 to noon under the portico. Joy will be there with several helpers. If you are able to carry your stuff, get your stuff downstairs on a cart, that's great, but there will be people to do that for you if you need that. Um, and that and other announcements are scrolling. Um, and they will scroll after the service as well. And now I'm going to invite you to share in one of the great hymns of the church, one that expresses the theology of many, many of us. Love divine, all loves excelling. Good morning. 
Welcome to Farmington First. Follow along with me the opening prayer. God of refuge and strength, open our hearts to the words of Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. During this Easter season, we abide in the assurance of your care. Have us move beyond the comforting promise of eternal life in your heavenly dwelling place to embrace a deeper hunger and longing to grow into a spiritual house during our lives here on earth. In the name of the master builder and living stone, the one who builds us into a spiritual house, amen. The scripture today is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but for the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. I'm going to invite the children to join me down here. As we always do, God loves me all the time. God loves me all the time. Amen. Come on down. So this morning we're going to be talking about a scripture that has folks act asking Jesus questions. And so I'd like to begin by asking all those folks questions. So how many of you have ever doubted your faith or wondered about God or doubted that God exists? Raise your hands, please. Yes, amen. So I wasn't just raising my hand to teach them what to do. I was raising my hand because I'm in that group too. And I think what Jesus says is really important about that. Jesus says, believe in me. But if you have trouble with that, do what I tell you to do and the rest will be okay. And the other lesson I want you all to learn is that your questions, your doubts, your wonderings, your, why did God do that? There are several, like, why did God send a flood? Why did God not save the unicorns? All of that. So, those are silly ones, of course. But, but there are lots of questions about scripture. This is the place to bring your doubts and your questions. Ask any of those folks or me 
Pastor Anthony, when you have questions or doubts, it's really important that you know that this is a safe place to bring them and to ask them. Because my experience teaches me that questioning and doubting leads to stronger faith. So please understand it's okay to doubt and wonder and have questions. And it's okay to share those questions here. Thomas taught us that. The Apostle Thomas taught us that. Jesus blessed him even when he doubted and had questions. So please know that's true for you too. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. You may go to Sunday school with Mrs. Malaforis. And Sharon has middle schoolers. Mrs. Jesse, I'm sorry, has middle schoolers. There we go. So how will they know? I share a story of a young woman growing up in a church. Her name was, is Melissa. She was more like a girl caught between childhood and womanhood. We've all been there, right? Her dark brown skin was smooth as silk. Her eyes were like pools of dark, rich chocolate. Her smile made those pools twinkle, and her laugh was infectious. The African braids, which had been painstakingly woven into her nappy hair, were always flopping and flying around because, well, she was never still. Any of you ever met a kid like that? Melissa was very popular with her peers, mostly for all the right reasons. She was friendly, kind, honest, trustworthy, and fun to be around. She never suggested that her group of friends do anything dangerous or illegal. She was a good student and usually willing to help any of her friends who were struggling with their studies or a particular subject. Still, it was also true that she liked the attention of being popular, who wouldn't? Liked being the leader of the in-crowd, like most normal young people in the midst of early adolescence, she had more energy than she knew how to direct. 
She was always full of very difficult questions, which could usually send several adults at once running for reference books and all kinds of information that had previously been far beyond their scope of understanding. Melissa's questions were meant to be difficult or challenging or obnoxious or threatening. She had those normal moments as well, but her questions were difficult because they were usually extremely profound. Her pastor was not exempt from being put on the spot by Melissa's inquisitive need to understand absolutely everything with which she was presented. One day, Melissa came to her pastor with an age-old question. Pastor Bob, do I have enough faith? Sometimes, Melissa said, I'm not sure what I believe. Even though her pastor had developed a loving, trusting relationship with her, Melissa asked the question as if she were afraid that he would be angry. It seemed like she was afraid that having these particular questions meant that there was something wrong with her. Maybe even God would be angry with her. Fortunately, Bob was a wise man with many years of experience. Right away, he assured her that God loves her and her questions were very normal. It's kind of what I was trying to say in our children's moment. Many of the most faithful people in our church have, <clears throat> have had now or previously exactly the same questions, he explained. Indeed, throughout the years of service to the church, he had guided many members of his congregations through the same struggles about issues of faith. Nonetheless, he didn't want to answer Melissa's question lightly or too easily. It's not an easy question. And he wasn't quite sure how best to respond to her spiritual searching at this time in her life. So he assured her again that everything was all right and asked for some time to think. They made an after-school date for a Coke the next week. But the next Sunday, while Pastor Bob was greeting members of the youth group, as he did almost every week, he noticed that Melissa was in conversation with a new young man from the neighborhood. A youth, he was new, was standing just a little bit withdrawn. You know how new kids do, right? Pastor Bob observed for a while, noting that Michael, the new young man, had thick Coke bottle glasses, matted hair, crooked teeth, disheveled clothing, his pants were hanging a little lower than was traditionally acceptable. Pastor Bob wasn't certain, but it looked like personal hygiene and cleanliness were skills this new member had yet to learn. As he watched, the pastor observed Melissa greeting Michael cheerfully and introducing him to some of her friends. He overheard her asking him get acquainted questions, you know, like, what are you interested in? What sports do you like to play? What school will you attend? Melissa was genuinely pleased when she discovered they would attend the same school. She offered to show him the ropes for his first few days. For his part, Michael seemed to perk up to shine a little more brightly as his conversation with this hospitable new friend developed. But then, all of a sudden, the atmosphere in the room changed. People were whispering to each other. Some could be overheard making disparaging remarks about their potential new friend. For a while, Melissa ignored the whispers, but finally she began to approach her friends and ask them to be kind to her new friend. Her friends told her point blank that Michael was a geek, several other explicit terms. And if she remained friends with him, she wouldn't be popular any longer, not at church and certainly not at school. Ever been in moments like that? Finally, Melissa was so embarrassed by her friends that she began to explain rather loudly that she was Michael's new friend and she expected that everyone at her church would treat him with respect and kindness. 
Melissa's speech reminded Pastor Bob why he was there in the first place. And he began to be, to, he, excuse me, he was the first to follow her example, greeting Michael warmly and making plans to get acquainted with him. In preparation for their after school meeting, Pastor Bob carefully considered Melissa's question and her behavior that Sunday morning in youth group. And he found himself drawn to our gospel lesson for this morning. So when they got together over Cokes, Pastor Bob asked Melissa why she had been so friendly to Michael. Frankly, she wasn't sure. She simply said she knew it was the right thing to do. Pastor Bob asked her how it felt to have her friends threaten to withdraw their friendship if she continued her friendship with Michael. Well, she didn't like it, but she said, you know, my folks still love me and you still love me, Pastor Bob. And then her face lit up as she recalled the old song she had learned in Sunday school, and Jesus loves me too. Pastor Bob shared his scriptural insight with Melissa and he explained to her that her actions, her behavior at youth group and other times were a sure and certain sign of her faith. He told her about Jesus respecting those who doubted and who had the courage to ask their questions of doubt. He, he told her the famous story we, co excuse me, we commonly associate with doubting Thomas. Thomas also asked questions in today's lessons, those questions of how do we know, who are you, where do you come from, are you really God's son? And then Pastor Bob talked about Thomas and Philip in our lesson for today. Thomas didn't feel sure about the path to eternal life, and Philip wanted to see God. I've had that feeling myself. Let's see, God. Like you, Pastor Bob said to Melissa, both of these apostles didn't feel certain that they had enough faith. And Jesus said to them essentially, I hope that you can believe in me, but if you aren't convinced yet, then be convinced by your works, by what you and others do. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Often, Pastor Bob continued, actions precede faith, and faith is confirmed by actions. Melissa looked a little confused, and Pastor Bob realized that he'd kind of spoken above her conceptual ability to understand. So he tried again. He said, it's a lot like the chicken and the egg. Sometimes it's hard to tell which came first, the action or the faith. And that was all right with Jesus. So it's got to be all right with you too, Melissa. And so that's how they will know, by our love and our actions. Your next day. We appreciate your continued prayerful the financial support of this community of faith. For those in the sanctuary, please remember to place your offering in one of the boxes as you exit. For those viewing and listening to worship, you may mail in or drop off a contribution to our address, 33112 Grand River, Farmington, 48336. You may use PayPal and direct our contribution to First, United Methodist Church of Farmington, and you may also text to give by texting FUMC Give to 44321 and follow the prompts. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful that you sent Jesus to earth for us. We would not be here today if it were not for Jesus. In our gratitude, we now give our tithes and offerings to you to continue to spread this good news in our community and throughout the world. Amen.
The time has come for us to pray together, to lift our joys and our concerns. I like to start with the joy. I have the joy of meeting with the confirmands today and with the youth group after that. And young ones around us are such a joy. I'm so proud to be their pastor. Also, we lift the people of Ukraine. The victims of that shooting in Buffalo, our students and teachers, healthcare workers, Matthew and uh, Nicholas Walter and William Morrison. And those who are recovering, Ken Berry, who is with us today, Nancy Imus, Pat Shuffler, Patty Morrison, Jim Glennie, Marilyn Totten, Denise Ruff, and Braden and Nina Smith. And other health concerns, Stephen Porter, Dean Coppin, Reverend Rita Hayes, who's had an accident, Lucy Brunke, Don Fleming, Jerry Lou Rodebaugh, Marty, Gail E., Lisa Smith, Kay Wolf, and St. John, Reverend Sharon Scott, Karma Houston, Opal Sherman, Mildred, and Edna Tyson, Elizabeth Bartram, Sue Jackson, Terry Shuffler, Brian Lim, and Dave Evans. And COVID-19 concerns. Uh, most of you will have noticed that we didn't have special music today um, because uh, Brenna and Carson Drake uh, have both tested positive for COVID. And so Dave is at home with them, obviously. Also Janice Cresswell and Lily Bartram. Those who struggle with cancer, William Smith, Matthew Jones, Aid McLaren, Daniel Maj, Jerry Baum, Sam and Bill Johnston, and Thomas Lee. And for those who mourn the loss of family members, the family of Carl Miller, Verla Shoup, Silas Trupiano, Don Bonwagner, Marge Johnston, Lornell Mock, Adelaida Manalo, and all those who grieve because of tragic me. Now I'm going to invite us into a few moments of silence, after which I will gather our prayers and we will pray together. Gracious and always loving God, we give you thanks for so much today for the opportunity to worship either virtually or in person. We give you thanks for the young ones among us, for opportunities to share in their energy and their wisdom, their doubt and their faith. We lift all of those we have named out loud and those we name in our hearts. Gracious God, embrace each and every one that they might know your peace, your healing. Rock them in your loving care that no matter what is going on, they might know that you are with them, loving them, caring for them, and lifting them up. Gracious God, be with us now even as we pray together. The prayer that Jesus taught those apostles so very, very long ago even in the midst of their doubt. Our Father, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
And now a song of deep faith. Yesu, Yesu. Go forth from this place in peace, knowing the love of Christ for each and every one of us, that we might know how blessed we are and be blessings to others. Go and enjoy this beautiful day until the rain starts. Have a great time enjoying the sun and the warm weather and the week to come. In the name of Christ, amen.